Good afternoon from the University of the Philippines Open University, Los Baños, Laguna. As part of the Women's Month and the International Day of Forests, the UPOU Faculty of Management and Development Studies and Office of Gender Concerns bring you Advancing Gender Equality, Sustainability, and Inclusive Society, Role of Permaculture, Community Forest Development, and Native Trees as Sustainable-Based Livelihoods in the Philippines. I am Julaine Bagos from the Faculty of Management and Development Studies, and I will be your host for today's seminar. We are currently live on site and via live stream at networks.upou, UPOU Facebook page, and the UP Open University YouTube channel. To formally open our program, may we call on the Dean of the Faculty of Management and Development Studies, Dr. Joan V. Serrano. Isang maalab at mapagpalayang uh, hapon, hapon na pala sa ating lahat. Let me officially welcome everyone to this forum on advancing gender equality, sustainability, and inclusive society. Today, we will be focusing on the role of permaculture, community forest development, and native trees as sustainable-based livelihoods in the Philippines. We at FMDS, uh, UPOU, can never overemphasize that gender equality and sustainability are crucial components of creating a more inclusive society. As a faculty of study, which is a collective of various disciplines that spans from health to the environment to management and to the development fields, the, the very essence of FMDS is to advance gender equality, sustainability, and inclusive society. Through this forum, we hope to explore ways in which permaculture, community forest development, and planting of native trees can contribute to building a more equi equitable and sustainable future for everyone. As we celebrate Women's Month, we will also examine how gender equality can be integrated into these practices and how they can be leveraged to promote the participation and empowerment of women in sustainable development initiatives, including sustainable-based livelihoods. This afternoon, let us look forward to an engaging and thought-provoking discussions and learning from our esteemed speakers, uh, both uh, on-site and uh, online, and on how we can work together toward um, achieving these goals. Again, um, welcome to UPOU, and thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, for those who are watching um, via streaming, and those who are, who are here on site, we hope you will find this forum informative and enriching. Magandang hapon sa inyo lahat. Thank you very much, Dean Joan, for the warm welcome. So to know more about the UP Open University and the Faculty of Management and Development Studies, please watch these videos. When the only notion constant is change, when information is obtainable with a single click of the mouse or a tap of a screen, humans seem to be at the center of it all, making them in sync with the changes, in constant motion. This is not limited to those living in cities whose hands seldom part with their gadgets. In rural areas, the innovations and discoveries and technologies are used to ease lives and bridge gaps in knowledge, skills, and practices. With the new knowledge and information being created, reproduced, and shared at a rapid pace, people constantly need to retool themselves to keep up with continuously changing work requirements. In today's digital age, people need to learn how to learn and learn anywhere and anytime. The University of the Philippines Open University, the fifth constituent unit of the University of the Philippines system, provides opportunities for people to pursue further studies through open and distance e-learning. In February 23, 1995, the University of the Philippines Open University was established it is mandated to provide Filipinos all over the world wider access to quality higher education through open and distance e-learning or ODEL. 
UPOU now offers various degree programs to learners located in more than 70 countries all over the world. These programs are under the Faculty of Education, the Faculty of Information and Communication Studies, and the Faculty of Management and Development Studies. UPOU also offers continuing education courses and massive open and distance e-learning courses. UPOU uses various information and communication technologies, computer programs and applications to deliver instructional content, and connect teachers and learners all over the world. Now more than ever, UPOU continues to transcend borders and break barriers through constant generation of knowledge and open exchange of ideas. It persistently tries new mechanisms to reach a larger number of learners. It perseveres in mentoring learners who shall be change agents, equipped to participate in the co-creation of knowledge for the benefit of Filipino communities everywhere. True to its mission, UPOU shall continue to reinvent itself to provide 21st century education in an increasingly open world. The Faculty of Management and Development Studies, or FMDS, is one of the three faculties of studies of the University of the Philippines Open University. It was established in 2004 when the then Faculty of Health Sciences and of Management Sciences were merged. At UPOU, courses are delivered online. Students study using specially designed learning materials and interact with each other in virtual classrooms. Teaching, research, and public service. FMDS offers 15 graduate programs. Graduate Certificate in and Master of ASEAN Studies. Diploma in and Master of Environment and Natural Resources Management Diploma in and Master of International Health Diploma Program in Land Use Planning Diploma in and Master of Land Valuation and Management Diploma in and Master of Research and Development Management Diploma in and Master of Social Work Diploma in Women and Development Master of Arts in Nursing and Master of Public Management. FMDS conducts research both in our program disciplines and open and distance e-learning. We tap on our expertise in open learning and network technologies to address institutional, health, environmental, social issues, and problems affecting the country. To help disseminate research results, FMDS publishes the Journal of Management and Development Studies. FMDS offers non-formal and continuing education courses to cater to the wider public. These short-term courses focus on topics in the fields of health, environment, and entrepreneurship. We conduct capacity building programs to help upgrade the competencies of institutions and professionals as well as community-based programs targeting specific sectors. FMDS holds web stream seminars and symposia that feature vital issues relevant to the programs of the faculty. To further expand our reach, we have offered massive open online courses, or MOOCs. In this rapidly changing world, FMDS holds fast to its commitment to serve the global community of learners, scholars, and workforce. By providing responsive, interactive, technology-maximizing, and multidisciplinary programs, FMDS hopes to develop change agents who can make a difference in the lives of the communities they lead and serve.
Let us also watch this video on the International Day of Forests celebra celebration. Life is about balance, about give and take. And forests give us so much. They purify our water. They clean our air. They fight climate change by capturing carbon. They give us food, life-saving medicines, and they improve our well-being. But our forests are vulnerable. They are endangered by fires, pests, droughts, and other threats. That is why we need to look after them. We need to give, not only take. Healthy forests for healthy people. All right, at this juncture, we can now proceed with the presentation. It is my pleasure to introduce to you our first resource speaker. He is an assistant professor under the Faculty of Management and Development Studies of the UP Open University, teaching environmental courses. He is a professional forester, having completed his Bachelor of Science in Forestry degree at the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. He also obtained his Master of Science in Resource Management at the University of Edinburgh. Currently, he is a member of the Master of Innovation and Business class of 2024 under the Asian Institute of Management. His research areas focus on sustainable forest management, watershed development and environmental management, biodiversity conservation, nature-based solutions, forest governance, and other related disciplines. He has previously worked with the Picard DOST, supervising R&D in environmental management, as well as a researcher in World Agroforestry Center and Leiden University. He has also served as consultant to the USAID, Global Affairs Canada, European Union Delegation Philippines, including international organizations such as the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity and the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. He is an advocate of native forestries, focusing on forest production and ecosystem services provided by trees. During his free time, he loves gardening and farming forest trees and crops. And as a way of realizing his vision of sustainable forest management and putting this into practice, he established a startup forest nursery known as the Sakabuhayan Forest Services. To talk us through the going native, challenges, opportunities, and engaging women in the development of Philippine native trees planting in the Philippines, please welcome Forester Carl Abelard Villegas. Thank you, Jelaine, for the warm introduction. Good afternoon, Dean John Serrano. Good afternoon to my fellow colleagues at the University of Philippines, Open University. Good afternoon to all our students who are participating in this event. To all the guests and visitors as well as those participating in, in Zoom and social media outlets. I have my first question to all of you. Some from time to time, I will also use Filipino language if if that would be fine with you all. So, ang una kong tanong sa inyo, kindly just raise your right hand. Sino sa inyo ang nakapagtanim na ng puno? Kindly raise your right hand. So, that is about one, two, three. So, I think that is half of the participants in this room right now? Okay, good enough. 
my second question goes like this. No? Sino sa inyo ang nakapagtanim na ng mga native o mga katutubong puno? Biglang kumonte. Kanina kalahati, ngayon kumonte na lang, no? So, alam nyo ba ang native o katutubo? Biglang kumonte. So, that is the essence of my, the topic of my presentation right now. So, there's a slight revision in the title. So, the title goes, Going Native, Challenges, Opportunities, and Ways of Engaging Women in forestry development and native tree planting in the Philippines. So the outline of my presentation is first, I will discuss a snapshot of the status of Philippine forest lands and the forest cover. Second, I will be discussing the threats to forests and forest degradation in the Philippines as well as in the region. And third, I will be discussing about ecosystem services. Fourth, how does the ecosystem services obtained from the forest contribute to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals? Have you heard of this from our fellow high school students? And then, I ask you the question now, why do we need to plant native trees? Kanina, konti ang nag ang hand dun sa second question. Then I will be providing you a list of important native trees in the Philippines that is more commonly known. Maraming native trees, but I will just list a few of those who are quite important. And then I will be discussing about engaging women in forestry development as well as native tree planting. Eight, I will be discussing a list of forestry policies related to native trees planting, and then the challenges and opportunities. So the status of the Philippine forest lands and forests. So under the Regalian Doctrine, all lands of the public domain belong to the state based on the 1987 Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines. And under Section 3, it states that lands of the domain are classified into agricultural, forest or timber, mineral lands, and national parks. The total land area of the Philippines, which is legally classified as forest land, as well as the alienable and disposable land, is 30 million hectares. Out of this total area, the forest land consists of 15.8 million hectares, which is 52.7%, while A and D accounts for 14.2 million hectares, or roughly 47%. So the different forest lands are classified into various classes. So these are the established timberland, national parks, game refuge, and bird sanctuary. That includes our Mount Makiling National Park civil reservations, military and naval reservations, fish ponds, and there's a remaining 2.5% which is unclassified forest land. So you will see a table of the status of forest cover since the time of the Spanish colony during 1575, wherein we have about 27.5 million hectares of forest cover. And the recent statistics that was accounted for in 2015 has left us only of 7 million hectares. No? So very substantial no? decline in terms of forest cover. This is based from a NAMUYA record and from the Forest Management Bureau. The deforestation in the Philippines, at least 92% was covered by rainforests. So this was based on the revised master plan. So what really happened to our forests? So these are the different threats of forests and forest degradation. 
So you have the industrialization and globalization. You have massive road and highway expansion, illegal logging activities, explosive growth of biofuels and other cash crops. That includes also agricultural expansion or extensification. Population growth, we have 27.5 million hectares of uplanders living in the forest land that creates pressure on the forest. But do we blame them for that? Threats to the protected areas. We need to have protected areas to conserve and protect our remaining forests. And essentially, these are technically no-touch zones, no? But in reality, there are existing people who are continuously harvesting from the forest. And we have what is popularly felt right now, the climatic change, no? And the invasive and alien species. This creates pressure on our forests, especially the exotic ones, those which are not native to our area. You will see in the photos, and actual photos, of threats to the forests. So you have, on the left-hand side, two people who just harvested firewood, relentless cutting the forest, and piling this firewood on their carabaos. This is in Nuevo Vizcaya, and on the right-hand side, you have a woman carrying firewood. But do you blame them? Are they already considered a bad person in the forest, wherein they need this firewood in order to cook for their food? So these are the existing threats or the realities existing in the forest lands. And essentially, why are these people, why are the upland people, even us, no? We are benefiting from the firewood that we use because we need the ecosystem services derived from nature as well as the forests. And you have four types of ecosystem services that includes the supporting. These are the functions provided by ecosystems for the production of plants and animals with living spaces or habitat allowing for diverse, diversity of species to take place. And you have regulating function. These are the benefits obtained from the regulation of ecosystem processes, the climate regulation, microclimate regulation, flood control, soil stabilization, and crop pollination. Because you need insects, you need wildlife in order to pollinate the crops. But without the regulating, regulating services derived from the forests, Nature will not function in its proper way. And you have the provisioning services. So these are the material benefits and goods obtained from ecosystems. Fuel wood, firewood, timber, and other genetic resources, including the food, the food that we get from the forest. So you will see in the earlier slide, yung nangunguha ng mga panguling, nangunguha ng panggatong. These are what you call the provisioning ecosystem services. And lastly, you have the cultural ecosystem services. These are the non-material benefits or the intrinsic value of nature people gain from ecosystems, like appreciating the environment for leisure. Sino ba dyan namamasyal sa inyo sa ilalim ng puno? Nagre-relax. No. So yan yung mga cultural services, which also includes educational and for the other indigenous people up in the uplands, they also considered this as religious. If you go to uh, the northern part of the Philippines, some of the uplanders consider the mountains and the forests as a religious and sacred place. So these ecosystem services need to be protected in order to address the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals because we not, need not act alone, but we're also in harmony with the global and international development. Hence, we have the different sustainable development goals or the SDGs. These are universal call, action, call action to end poverty, 
to protect the planet and improve the lives and prospects of everyone and everywhere. These goals were adopted by the UN Member States in 2015 as part of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which sets out a 15-year plan to achieve the goals. The agenda is a plan of action for people, planet, and prosperity. Then why do we need to plant native trees? Essentially, the Philippines, being an archipelago and being in the tropics, is very diverse in biodiversity. It has 3,600 identified native trees, 67% of which are endemic. Have you heard the term endemic in your classes? So you have the native or indigenous, minsan indigenous, native, pinagpapalit yon. Native or indigenous are found in a particular place or region. Endemic is specifically found in a specific geographic region, like only in the Philippines. This is endemic. But when you say indigenous or native, these can also be found in the Philippines, as well as our neighboring countries in, in ASEAN region. And you have the exotic or alien species. These species are introduced accidentally or intentionally. And one of the exotic species we have is mahogany. It is not native to the country. So the Philippines has 3,600 3, native trees found only in our country, which is endemic, according to Angelina Galang of Merriam College. This is attributed to the richness of biodiversity in the country with exceptional levels of biological endemism. However, much of our forests are threatened, are threatened by deforestation and forest degradation, which supports the natural habitat of native species of trees. These are continuously being subjected to illegal logging, agricultural expansion, and indiscriminate land use and conversion, including the introduction of exotic and invasive species, including other factors. If we do not act right now, we suffer the consequence of losing our natural resources heritage, thus causing a dramatic decline in the ecosystem services provided by forests and trees. According to Rainforest Restoration Initiative, native trees support the restoration and expansion of forest habitats for threatened native plants and animals, contributing to the enhancement in biodiversity. The use of native trees in forest restoration, or some may call it reforestation, could bring a lot of benefits to nature and livelihood of the people through forest conservation and enhancing production by way of establishment of native tree farms and development of forest plantation. So now that I have discussed to you what are the native trees, I will give you a snapshot of 10 native trees which are more popularly known in the country. Native trees which could provide the provisioning, the regulating, the cultural, as well as the, what is the other one? Provisioning, regulating, cultural, and regulating. So there are various trees. Some are used for timber, some are used for ornamental purposes, some are used for food. And for the first tree, we have what we call the paraiso, and you have the scientific name. So it's also called bagalunga or white cedar. This is indigenous or native to the Philippines, India, Nepal, and Japan, China, Malaysia, and it occurs along seashores up to 1,200 meters. It grows only up to 15 meters, deciduous. The meaning of deciduous, yung palagi nalalaglag yung dahon. Kapag palagi ka sinasabihan, nananay tatabi, oh, iho, magwalis ka na dyan sa likod. Araw-araw na lang nalalaglag ang dahon. Yun ang deciduous. So you have, you have the opposite of deciduous later. It's what's called evergreen. Yung minsan lang malalaglag ang dahon. So the status, not threatened. It grows very fast. So we have native trees which grows very fast. Not only exotic trees like 
gemelina, but we also have a counterpart for native trees. The uses of paraiso is used for light construction, cabinet making, and it's resistant to termites. Matiba itong kahoy na to, hindi inaanay. It is excellent for wood carving, it was already tested for wood carving, agricultural implements, handles, plywood, and boat making. And it's also resilient to climate change. It's good for restoration. And for agroforestry, you can see the characteristics of the tree, malili tandaho, no? So you can plant crops, plant fruit trees underneath, and it's also used for road planting and landscape. So I will show you an example. Kaya ako may dalang kahoy dyan, no? Hindi po to sa guwan, hindi rin po ako sumali sa fraternity, but this is a chopping board, a sample, no? So this is made from paraiso. So this is very good. The grain is very nice. It's like pine tree. Pine trees, we have pine trees, but we also import pine trees from other countries. So you see, this is about 12 years, no? And it was already tested for wood carving, and it's also be used for plywood and other household items like furniture. Pwede ko tong ipasa, paikot natin, pero balik nyo lang po at tagi isa. <laughs> So that is a paraiso tree, no? So you can see in the picture, that's about 15 years, mother tree, no? In Quezon province. The Department of Science and Technology, Forest Products Research and Development Institute, names substitute trees for wood carving. And one of them is paraiso. Because they have already tested the mechanical, structural, and physical properties of the tree. And it can serve as substitute because in Paete, sino na nakarating sa inyo sa Paete? Okay. Di ba? Kilalang kilala ang Paete sa paglililok ng kahoy. Ang ginagamit nilang kahoy doon ay yung tinatawag nilang batikuling. But batikuling is very slow growing. And one more issue is that people kept on harvesting batikuling but not planting. Aside from being slow growing, so wala na silang sustainable supply. So what will happen to the wood carving industry? Some of them have shifted to cake making. See, di ba sayang yung industry nila of wood carving, which has been passed on from generations to generation. Hence, this study looked at the quality of paraiso, and it was tested to be as similar to batikuling in terms of properties. And the other tree that was tested is Gemelina. But Gemelina is an exotic tree. So, doon na tayo sa atin. Yung pang sariling atin. But we need to plant these trees. It is good news for the country's wood carving industry, which has been experiencing shortage in its raw material supply. In a recent study, two species were identified by DOST as substitute idea materials to the traditional use, but equaling. So this traditional tree is now classified as threatened, yung batikuling, due to overuse and slow growth, causing a substantial decline in its natural population. Paraiso is considered to be a very fast, hindi lang fast, but very fast growing native tree, which could provide the sources of sustainable materials to establishment of tree farms and plantations. So we have another native tree, Molave. Kilala niyo siguro yung Molave, no? It's also called Molawin. So this is an indigenous or native tree. Can be found in these countries, in low elevation and along sea coasts. Can grow up to 10 to 20 meters in height. This is evergreen. So in, hindi kayo magwawalis araw-araw o every other day, no? So yung pala ang dahilan. Evergreen or deciduous. This tree is endangered. Oh, now ubus na siya sa kalikasan sa natural state of the environment. It is also fast growing, matibay sa init, drought tolerant, 
intolerant to water lagging. So what are the uses of molave? No. It is a durable wood used for high-grade construction, requiring strength. Kulay dilaw ang kahoy nito. Manufacture furniture, interior works, novelties, artifacts, railroad ties. Yung mga reels natin ng trend, gawa po yun sa molave. And it's also an urban ornamental tree. And its leaves are used for medicinal purposes. The dominance of Molave in forests over limestone hills is the main reason why we have forests, what is called as Molave forests. We have the Bagras, or what is also known as the rainbow tree, or the Mindanao eucalyptus. It is indigenous. It's also found in the Philippines, Molucas, and New Guinea. It is an evergreen tree. It is vulnerable, grows very fast. It is one of the most important species of eucalyptus. It is a plantation tree, and the wood can be made also into lumber, veneer, or plywood. And also, with the International Day of the Forest, the decoction of leaves is taken as a tea for cough and asthma, no? for health purposes. The oil is extensively used for pharmaceutical purposes. So if you want to see a bagras tree, you can visit the town of Bae, and beside the church, you will find this tree. Nandun yung rainbow tree, yung mga rainbow pattern. No? We have the white lawan. This is endemic or only found in the country. This is part of the what we call the Philippine Diptera carp. It is a very large tree, 50 meters. It is vulnerable. One of the finest timbers used for light and heavy construction. Yung mga lolo natin na kinabang dyan sa mga dipterocarp, mga bahay na matitigas ang kahoy, kinabang na yung mga ninuno natin kasi naubos, na, naubos tayong mga apo. Used for veneer, hardboard, plywood, and also used as for furniture and illuminant for caulking boats. No? It's also used for forest restoration purposes and planting along highways. So we have the white lawan, a very towering tree that is 21 years old. You have bangkal, no? So we have planted trees, kanina. Bangkal is also known as lechard pine. It's indigenous. can be found in Southeast Asia. It's about 10 to 15 meters, evergreen. It's not threatened. It's also fast growing. And one good thing about bangkal, it is tolerant to water lagging. Kahit yung mga naiipunan ng tubig, hindi mamamatay ang kahoy, unlike other tree, pag nabababada ng tubig. So kung gusto nyo magtanim ng kahoy at nabababada, hindi naman kayo magtatanim ng palay o ng mais. Gusto nyo magtanim sa pilapil ng bangkal. Yan po, yan. Yan nakikita nyo po, bangkal po yan, sa tabi ng ilog, ang kabila po ng ilog na yan, ay mga palayan. At yan po ay sa Nauhan Oriental Mindoro. It's about four years ago, I visited the place, but right now, there's nothing, the consequence of the oil spill. This river is leading to the sea. Kita nyo po yung bangkal yan, yung mga matataas po na yan. Ayan, yan po pala. Okay. So the trees do not only provide sources of materials, but also serves to protect their farms as windbreak and from riverbank erosion. Siyempre, sino ba namang hindi makakilala sa tinuro nung, nung grade school? Ano ba ang national tree ng Philippines? Nara. It is indigenous, found in Southeast Asia. It is endangered, fast-growing, drought-tolerant. But the beauty of Nara is a high-grade quality wood for furniture, exterior, interior cabinet making. It also has medicinal uses. And especially, it can be used for landscaping and forest parks. Namumulaklak po ng dilaw yung Nara. Napakaganda po niya pag namumulaklak. Kanina, yung ating culmination planting, this is the Arius, no? So this is endigenous, or Ijem Dagat. It's called Ijem Dagat Endigenous. and can be found in Batanes. So that tree that we planted earlier, the ancestry of the tree came from Batanes, no? Or what we call the provenance of the tree, no? It is evergreen. Minsan lang malaglagan daw niya, kaya napakaganda po niya. Hindi ka magawali sa araw-araw, but it grows moderately slow. It is an attractive and excellent ornamental tree 
for landscaping. It is a prized plant used for bonsai making. Way back in 2012, nakahuli sila dyan sa Kalamba ng isang truck ng Arius galing po sa Aurora. Ang nagpe-pressure ng malaki. Hindi ko nasasabihin, baka maghanap kayo ng Arius. It's, it's, it's really so... The price is very, you know, price a fortune, no? So it's also used for house construction, carving, and flooring. You have the Katmon. Yung pinakamaraming puno kanyang tinanim, ito po ay endemic. It's only a small tree. It is vulnerable and evergreen. It is fast-growing. It has beautiful white and aromatic flowers, no? And it has edible fruit. But its wood can also be used for furniture and other Light construction uses. You have the Salingo Gon. Kung meron sa Japanese cherry blossoms, meron tayong counterpart, meron tayong pang Pinoy, no? This is the Salingo Gon. So we also call this as the Sakura, no? Yung, it produces Sakura-like you know, foliage, you know? It is an ornamental tree with flowers. The wood can also be utilized for general construction. And it grows very slow, no? Sometimes, yung mga leaves na laglag, may iwan na lang mga bulaklak. We also have the Bagawak Morado. We have earlier the Bagawak Morado. It is a colorful tree. It is vast growing, can be used for home gardens, and it resembles excellent fireworks display and believed to be used for healing woods. So what is the role of women in forestry development? So I do not limit only in terms of native tree planting kasi malawak yung ginagawa po ng ating kababaihan hindi lang sa pagtatan ng puno. Marami pang ibang bagay. So, makikita po natin, yan po yung mga iba't ibang examples sa mundo. So, you have sustainable forest management in the Chimbo River Basin in Ecuador. Ecuador in Central America. Am I right? This is executed by Sendas Foundation and financed by International Tropical Timber Organization. This enable the local women to establish two forest nurseries that is develop a production, marketing, training, and awareness raising plan to help reforest the watershed basin no? in the Philippines. No? We had a collaborative forest restoration partnership project between the DNR, DSWD, including three municipalities and 16 barangays in Oriental Mindoro, implemented in 2014 through the support of the USAID project. This focus on the establishment of local forest nurseries and development of restoration areas which are empowered by women, members of the Four Peace, including the Mangyan communities or the IPs. And we also have, later on, will be expounded by one of the resource person, Ms. Nida Coliado. They exemplified a community-based reforestation initiatives that also includes forest protection efforts and enforcement actions. See, hindi lang panlalaki yung forest enforcement, no? Yung pagka-confiscate. Ginagawa din po yan ni Namam Nida. These are being led by women officers, which, who are members of the community-based PO Federation in Palawan in order to achieve sustainable forest management. So in here, hindi po yan sa Pilipinas, no? So local women show their newly acquired fuel-efficient wood stoves, which help reduce wood fuel consumption in the forest communities of Kampong Thom province in Cambodia. This is an ASEAN nation. No? Kapitbahay po natin to. So yeah, nagawa sila ng mga... Meron silang wood stoves na ginagamit po ng mga kahoy. Para yung wood stoves nila mas efficient, hindi ka gagamit ang maraming kahoy. No? And this is this picture are the Mangyans from Oriental Mindoro. Nag-nursery establishment sila, so naghahalong kay sila ng lupa para ipapating dun sa mga plastic, tataniman po yan. So the women during the forest... Sorry? The local women during the forest nursery activities, which are part of the forest restoration initiatives in Oriental, in the uplands of Oriental Mindoro, Ito naman po yung grupo po ni Ma'am Nida sa Palawan. So they are leading the forest restoration efforts in the uplands of Palawan. No? So nagtatanim po sila doon sa uplands Palawan. Nangyari po ito noong pagkatapos po ng bagyo po sa Palawan para ma-reforest po nila yung kanilang lupain. 
Of course, we have to discuss about the policies, regulations, no? So these are a list of the important forestry policies in relation to planting and forest development activities. You have the Presidential Decree 705, Revised Forestry Code, Wildlife Resources Conservation Protection Act. You also have 7586 for the establishment of the management of the integrated protected area system. Executive Order 23, moratorium on the cutting and harvesting timber in the natural residual forests. So kung meron po kayong pilala, kamag-anak, taga-DNR, yan po ang nababanggit nila. EO 23, bawal magputol ng kahoy, bawal magbiyahe ng kahoy. Kung hindi, makakasuhan ka by virtue of EO 23. Executive number 26, so this is the National Greening Program, one of the biggest funded restoration program in Asia. You also have the 193, the expanding of the coverage of National Greening Program. And in terms of native trees, you have the Department of Administrative Orders of DNR, the national list of threatened Philippine plants and their categories. Kasi may listahan din po yan ng mga threatened Philippine plants. No? Hindi ka ba pwedeng pumunta ka sa gubat, mag-harvest ka ng tagbak o mag-harvest ka ng, ano yun, ng pako. Kailangan alamin mo kung ito ay pinagbabawal. Kung hindi, pag nakaharap mo ng DNR, maaaring ikaw ay makasaluhan. So it pays to know no, the policies and regulations. So lastly, I said, thank you. In conclusion, what are the challenges and opportunities in forestry development and planting of native trees? So forestry programs and interventions must recognize the role of women as forest users as well as Managers, given their invaluable knowledge, skills, and experience. Sabi nga nila, ang mga kababaihan, mas environment-friendly, mas mabait sa kalikasan. Ayaw nilang sirahin ng kalikasan. Totoo ba yun? Papayag ba ang mga kalalakihan dyan? Yun ang sabi nila, no? So, improve the understanding of gender roles and incorporate along value chains in forestry development with emphasis on activities related to forest nursery development and other micro-livelihood interventions. Ensure gender balance in participatory approaches in decision-making within community-based groups and associations for achieving sustainable forest management. This could be achieved through capacity building and training and women's group. Mainstream gender into forestry programs, policy and strategic frameworks to identifying gender-specific needs and assessment including analysis and related processes, cultures, and traditions. Because especially with the IPs, meron silang kultura na karaniwan ang mga kababaihan ay naiwan sa bahay, ang mga kalalakihan nagpupunta sa bundok, nangangahoy. So dapat natin irespeto rin ang kultura na ganito. For native tree planting and forest production, strengthening gender roles could focus on the research and development innovations in energy development up to field outplanting, maintenance and protection of forest-based resources. So that ends up my discussion for today. That was mentioned earlier by our beloved Dean John Serrano. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is planting now from the old Chinese proverb. Thank you. And the picture was taken sa paanan po yan ng Bundok Banahaw. Thank you. Thank you very much, Forester Villegas, for that very informative and inspiring lecture. We really enjoyed and learned a lot from your lecture, po, sir. So for our next topic, please allow me to introduce our second speaker. She is a registered nurse who earned her degree at the University of San Carlos in Cebu City. Her nursing career was highlighted a high degree of experience with teaching and training. Her roots as a Manobo from Agusan del Norte exposed her to agriculture and forestry. She is currently settled in Glunaga Integrated Farm in Barangay Paite, Pitogo, Quezon, participating permaculture. Her practice led to two Gawad Saka Awards 
and won two farm award for agriculture. True to her vocation as a teacher, Gunoga Integrated Farm was finally established as a Testa Farm School. So to discuss the role of women in permaculture, let us all welcome Ms. Nanyeva Weng Ligona. Magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Akala ko wala na kayo eh. <laughs> Alright, correct ko lang ha. Glinoga po. Glinoga. Medyo tang-twisting yung pangalan ko. Tang-twisting din po yung aking apelyedo. I need help here. Kailangan niya ng pin? Pin. Ayun ang UPO. Ayan, medyo na suspense ano. So, I am Wang again. Thank you, Miss MC, for introducing. Um, I am representing Glinoga Integrated Farm in Tabahongan or otherwise gift. Regalo. Na? So, we are, or we are, I am presenting to you how we created a forest farm or a food forest. The lady in the middle, a little lady, siya po yung una, kauna-unahang nagbugta sa farm. The lady and her dalamas. Familiar po kayo sa dalamas? No. A dalamas is a little wooden boat. Walang motor, walang katig, only a paddle. Sinadya ko pong buong pamilya ang picture so you can see how small Inay Ason is. May I introduce to you Asuncion Mercado Glinoga. Siya po ang unang generation. Nakatapos lang ng primary school. Noong unang panahon ay eh, okay na yun eh. Pag babae ka, primary school, okay ka na. Pwede ka na maging teacher nga actually eh. Noong unang panahon. Binugta ang Glinoga Farm na nasa isip lamang ni Inay Asun, ang ayo niyang magutom ang kanyang mga apo. Yun lang. Napakasimple. Ayaw magutom ni Inay ang mga, as mga apo. Kaya lang, si Inay ay na ng kanyang anak na father-in-law ko. In short, gift ay mana ng aking asawang si Bite. So kami ay third generation farmers. Ang gift dating namatay. Dumating kami sa gift in 2008. Cracked ang lupa. Bitak-bitak. Sobrang tuyo. It was literally smoking. Umuusok. Nakakakilabot. Scorching. 
wala kang masilungan. It, it is a 23 hectare, pero wala kang makain. Nilutuan kami ng tinolang manok na payat. Walang malunggay, walang tanlad. Kawawang manok. Masarap siya, pero pag tinola, di ba may papaya, may tanlad, may malunggay, may sili. Sarap yun, di ba? May paminta. Wala eh, asin lang. So, paano siya namatay? Number one, farmhand issues. Nagumpisa ang pandemic, lahat tayo, mostly, naging plantito, naging plantita, kanya-kanyang bili ng farm. Akala pwede ang absentee farmer. Akala pwede ang weekend farmer. Hindi po. So you need to hire. Pero wala kang ma-hire. Bakit? Gusto ng mga lalaki mag-construction. Kung may matitira man, wala namang alam. Yung gusto lang kumita, eh, hahanap ka or mag-hire ka ng mga tao kasi magpatabas ka. Dadating si magtatabas, ang dala ay kutsilyo. Pwede ba yon? Hindi. Hindi talaga. There is also a problem of insurgency. Noong pandemic nga, sa nabanggit ko na, nagsulputan ng farms. Tinarget din ng sabi nila, insurgency yung mga farm owners. Yung iba, they would think or they would tell us na it was just a scam. Farm owners receive text messages na galing daw po sa mga kaibigan natin sa bundok nang hihingi ng tulong, pangbili ng armas, pangbili ng medisina, pangbili ng pagkain, pangbili ng kabaong. We don't really know if it was a scam or it was really insurgency. Pero pumasok sa eksena sa nakakapagpatakot sa mga farm owners ang insurgency. Kaya some of the farmers, umalis na lang, tumigil na lang, kinalimutan ng farms. Another one is laws and policies. May mga national laws kasi or policies na ginawa ng mga nasa gubat na sementado. Nagets nyo ako? Yung mga gumawa ng batas, taga Manila, nakatira sa kondo. Ang ginagawa nila ng batas, ang mga nasa laylayan, minsan hindi tugma-tugma. No? Kasi ang concept nila, ang iniisip nila, urban area. Pero ang, ang totoong setup pala, iba, hindi kayang i-fit in yung rule or yung law na ginawa. Kasi ang nasa isip nung gumawa ng batas ay para sa urban area. So umayaw si farmer ulit. Kasi hindi, hindi pwede. Another one is balance between social justice and productivity. Minsan sa sobrang bait ni farmer or ni landowner, sige, bigay mo na. Sige, bigay mo na. Oh, may ani, sige, dalahin mo. Sige, iuwi mo sa pamilya mo. Inuwi nga ni, ni farm worker, binenta naman. Pero nakalimutan ni farm owner, na kailangan din pala niyang kumita. Sa sobrang bait ni farm owner, nakalimutan niya, na kailangan niyang magtira sa sobrang bait niya, pinamigay na niya, and it ended up losses. Lugi. Some farm owners or some farms die. Sino ba talaga si farmer? Minsan, nag nagkakagulo. There was a point in time na naguguluhan kami bilang farm, or farm owners or uh, property owners Kasi may padala ang government na ayuda. Or there is a support. Ipabigay daw sa farmer. Pero ang tanong, aling farmer? Si landowner ba? O si tenant? Alam niyo po yung tenant? 
yung trabahante ni farm owner. Minsan, natanggap ni tenant, hindi pala inapply doon sa lupang tenant siya. Ginamit sa ibang property. Minsan, si tenant, meron pang subtenant. So, yung iyong property na dapat binigyan sana ng fund, nawala. So, merong parang misalignment of um, support. Minsan, makakita ka ng, there are cases na yung ibang farm owners makakita ng ibang, although hindi naman ito experience ko lahat, ano, uh, naririnig ko din sa mga kasamahang farmers. Like, if you have heard of the news one time na pina-inventory lahat ng traktora na pinamigay ng gobyerno sa mga farmers, nandun ang traktora, nakaparada, hindi ginamit. Kasi pinamigay, basta lang maibigay, hindi sa tamang pagbibigyan. Binigyan ng traktora, hindi pala marunong yung mag-operate. Sayang. Misalignment. So, ang nangyari, wala na namang epekto. Namamatay pa rin ang farmer. Narinig ko ang salitang permakultura galing sa mga Australian farmers sa Queensland in 2008. Namangha ako sa salitang permakultura, namangha ako sa kwento nila about permakultura. And in 2008, when I stepped in, kasi yung third generation kami, kaso mo yung asawa ko was still and is still busy with his first love, I stood up to take care of the farm. Wala na akong choice. Ako na lang ang pwedeng mag-alaga sa farm. So again, sa na-mention ko, when we went there, scorched, Patay. It took us a few trials para makapatubo ng ordinaryong petsay. Patay, tigang ang lupa. So to revive the farm, dahil kaming mag-asawa ay walang pera, pampuhunan, kasi hindi hamak po na mamuhunan pag mag-umpisahan ng farm. No? We decided to go, what do you think? Anong pamamaraan ng pagsasaka ang ginamit namin para kami ay makapagsaka without pondo. Yes? May? Yes? Permaculture? Yes, nandun si permaculture. What particularly in permaculture do you think is the cheapest way of farming? Pakilakasan po? Huh? I can't hear you, sir. Pwede, pwede sir ang backyard farming. Kaya lang, hindi na ito backyard yung pinag-uusapan namin, natin. No? So we went to organic kasi siya ang mura. Organic farming is mura. So armed, armed with just one kilo of worms, recycled drum, and a brand new pala, yun lang yung medyo mahal, yung pala. Doon kami nag-umpisa sa organic farming namin. We used free energy. So alam naman natin kung ano yung mga free energy. Ano bang free energy? We have the sun. Yes, sunlight. What else? Rain, water. What else? Hangin and pakilakasan. Lupa. Nandiyan na lahat. Libre at konting sipag. Yeah, initially in permaculture, kailangan mo magsipag. We also introduced um, livestock kasi kailanganin natin ang ipot. We made use of natural pest control. We use uh, wood vinegar. Familiar ba kayo sa wood vinegar? Oh, isa itong product na... na may encounter na ba ninyo yung nag-uusok sa ilalim ng mangga? Pinauusukan ng ilalim ng mangga? Have you tried touching the smoke with your hand? Yung makapal na makapal na usok na parang cotton. Ramdan ba ninyo na parang may steam? Pag napatagal yun, mayroong pawis yun. Yun ang wood vinegar. 
That's our natural pesticide. No? National, natural pest control. We also uh, introduced bees para may pollination. We also tried to mechanize nung nagkaroon na ng konting pera, nakaipo na. And then, we followed the system na tinatawag nating katamsis. Familiar kayo sa katamsis? Ha? Huh? Wala pa? Wala pang nakakarinig? Sino nakarinig ng katamsis? Si Sir kumulubot ang noo. Ha? Huh? Okay, katamsis is katamaran system. Ah, so you're listening. Katamaran system or otherwise known as, Sir, Doc Jabez, sorry, or otherwise known as permaculture. No? Bakit siya katamaran system? Kasi you just plant now and then you will reap in the future na naka de cuatro ka na lang. No? Katam system, agree ba si Doc Jabez? <laughs> Katam sis, you learned one word today. So eto na, kasi sabi ko na nga, I had to stand up and face the farm. Walang makuhang men. Nasa Manila na construction. Others, mm, dito na lang ako sa bahay. Ang hirap maglinang. Linang is farm. Walang makuha. Loss of the jungle. Sundin na lang natin kung anong naging patakaran. Yun na lang ang ginagamit. No? Umabot kami sa punto na sige, babae na lang. If you can take a look at the pictures, napagsarihan na kami, ano? Nagkukopra kayo? Trabahong panlalaki yan. Pero sabi namin, bakit panlalaki? Lalaki lang ba ang kumakain ng bigas? So tumahimik na yung mga lalaki. Pero nung nakita nila, nakagwantes pala kami, yung aming upuan para matanggal yung coconut ay nakakutsun din. Aba, okay pala. Pwedeng jumoin. <laughs> Pero wala na. Close na ang hiring. Puro na kami babae. There is also, um, kung makikita ninyo yung second picture sa baba, talo kami pagbuhatan eh, mga babae. So what we did, we found a way. Imbis na pupunoy namin yung sako, hinati-hati namin yung laman. And then we do relay pag naghahakot kami. So pwede pa rin. So now, nakamekanize na kami, meron na kaming ATV, kung makita ninyo yung third picture. Hindi na kami nagbubungkal gamit ang piko at pala kasi mabigat nga naman. So that one is our oldest na staff. She is 58 years old, yung nag-aararo. Yung sa bottom most na picture, si Ate Mary. Siya ang nag-aararo sa farm. Isa sa mga nag-aararo, I mean. Grass cutters, men, women ang gumagamit. Um, power saw or chainsaw, women ang gumagamit. Running the bangka, women ang gumagawa. Plus, of course, with the help of nature. Because we believe that you'll never go wrong with nature. So way ahead. Since 2008, April 10, hanggang ngayon, we are already a few years na. Kahit pa paano, meron na kaming achievement. Recently, we have been um, um, awarded or granted as a registration approval becoming a TESDA accredited farm school. So we offer permaculture also, mga pa, pa cute cute na permaculture discussions. We also offer organic agriculture. We also offer agri crops or agricultural crops, uh, agro entrepreneurship NC2 and NC3. Uh, we are hoping na mag-hire. Tinitrain pa lang namin yung aming lady welder. So mag offer din kami ng welding from a lady instructor also. And yung pangatlo, nananatili pa pong pangarap. It's a farm to market road. Kasi hanggang ngayon, the farm is um, unaccessible to transport. But yet, si Doc Jabez was already in the farm. I would like to invite you all to come over to the farm. So, thank you. That was Glinoga Integrated Farm in Tabahongan, a girl power farm. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Glinoga, for that very informative talk. So, before we proceed to our third speaker, 
Uh, to loosen up, we've prepared an icebreaker for you. So we have prepared here uh, questions, three questions from Sir Carl, and the other two questions from Ms. Ginaga. If you know the answer, just uh, raise your hand, and we have, we have a token for you if you answered it correctly. So our first question, amongst the, amongst the list of trees presented, which tree is considered anti-termite? Anyone from our audience here on site? <laughs> ah, yes. Ah, yes, that's correct. Congratulations. So the correct answer is paraiso. Okay, next question. What is the other name or term for a native tree? Anyone who knows the answer? Yes? Indigenous. Indigenous, yes, that's correct. Congratulations. Very good. Naman nakikinig talaga ang ating students from Poblacion. Okay, our third question. In forestry development, can you identify an activity that can be led by women? Okay, again, in forestry development, can you identify an activity that can be led by women? Activity po ba? Yung pagkakopras or pag-aalaro? Sorry, again? Pagkakopra po at pag-aalaro? Yung activity po ba? Yes, yes. Yung enumerate ni sir sa kanyang lecture? Ay, sir ba? Hindi ko po alam. No, no doubt, sabi ni sir. Another answer? Madami yan, bullets yun kanina. Anyone from our audience here on site? Ah, yes? Community-based refor Community ref reforestation, forest protection, and enforcement actions. Yes, that's correct. Very good. <laughs> Okay, from Ms. Glinaga's lecture naman, what is the cheapest way of farming? Uh, yes? No, that's wrong. Another... Yung nasa likod ata. Ito naka-glasses. Organic farming. Organic Oh, uh, no. Yes. Okay, that's correct. <laughs> Congratulations, you have a prize. And last question, what are the free four energies of permaculture? What are the free four energies of permaculture? What are those four? Sand, land, air, and water. Okay, so that's correct. <laughs> Congratulations. So very good ang ating mga students. Talaga nakikinig sa lectures. Okay, so let's now proceed to our third speaker. She is a dedicated environmentalist and forest conservation advocate. As the MCBF CMA president, she has devoted her career to protecting forests and preserving biodiversity. Her commitment to sustainable forest management has earned her numerous leadership positions, including board of director of PNNI, president of Palawan CBFM Federation, CBFM Regional President and Vice President of the National CBFM Federation of the Philippines. Born on September 26, 1956, her aim is to ensure that the protection of forests and make them more sustainable for future generations. Through 
her perseverance and leadership, she has inspired her community to take ownership of their forest resources and to engage in sustainable practices that promote biodiversity conservation and enhance community livelihoods. She firmly believes in the power of action, not just words, and lives by the saying, hindi lang sa salita, kundi pati sa gawa. Her efforts have contributed to the protection and restoration of forest ecosystems in Palawan, where her community-based forest management approach has been recognized as a model for sustainable forest management. Her dedication to forest conservation and community empowerment serves as an inspiration to many in the field and her contributions to environmental protection have earned her numerous accolades and awards. So to tell us about the role of women members of CBFMPO Federation in Palawan in forest protection efforts and forest-based livelihood activities, let us all listen to Ms. Nida Coliado. Magkakalikas ang araw po sa inyong lahat. Isang karangalan po muli ay makapagsalita sa inyo. Isang napakahalagang topic po ay ang meron tayo ngayon. Babae. Kapag nabanggit ang salitang babae, ilan sa mga pandiwang salita ay agad po ang pasok sa isip natin ay laba, luto, linis at chismis. Naging mural na linya din ang maging magsalitang para kang babae. Ibig sabihin, yakin, malamya at mahina. Si nanay, si teacher, si yaya. Mga maritis at chismosa. Kumadruna, tindera. Ilan sa mga usual na okupasyon na agad ay naiisip natin. Sa sarili nating kasaysayan, katapangan ni Bonifacio Daguhoy, ulapulapo ang laging tinatalakay. Pahapyo lamang pag-usapan si Gabriela Silang Orduha o Melchura Aquino. Sa pagiging moderno ng panahon, nagbago na rin ang anyo at disipinasyon o rol ng babae sa komunidad. Particular sa ating bansa, sa ating sariling pamayanan. Bilang kababaihan o individual, kailangan ba nating hintayin pang makita ng lipunan ng ating halaga? Mahigit dalawang taon ng nakaraan na simula ng aming mag, na simula naming maglagay ng tatak sa kahalagahan at ng kababayan sa aming komunidad. Ipinakita naming babae ay hindi pambahay lang o katulong sa bah ng asawa sa bukid. Sa probinsya kasi madalas limitado ang oportunidad na ibinibigay sa kababaihan. Taong 2002, sa maliit na sityo na makatumbalin bayan ng San Vicente, Palawan, ay nagsimula ang aming samahan na may 34 members, 19 ay mga kababaihan. Sa loob ng mahigit dalawampung taon ng aking pangunguna sa aking organis aming organisasyon, ay pamalas namin ang tapang kakayahan ng babae sa pagdating ng pangangalaga sa kalikasan. Sa loob ng mahigit na dalawang dekada ay may mga ilang awards at recognition na kaming natanggap. Ilan sa mga sumusunod na Outstanding of Environmental Protection in Palawan noong 2008, awarded by the Governor of Palawan. 2014, DNR CBFM awarded as a good people's organization for supporting the protection and development of the forest and natural resources. 2016, Awarded by the Office of the ABC and LJU as Good Implementor Environment of, and Community Welfare. At iyong lingkod ay nahalal na Presidente ng Region Fee Federation po sa CBFM. 2017, <coughs> ang inyong lingkod ay nahal na Executive Vice President ng CBFM o POS of the Philippines. 2018, ang aming samahan ay napili to present the showcase of the best practices, practices National PO Congress in the Philippines. 
Isa sa isa isa sa mga napili ng Makatumbalin Community Based Forest and Coastal Management na maging pilot ng Best Practices of PU sa buong Pilipinas sponsored by NTPEP Asia, Philippines and FFP. Noong 2021, na-feature kami sa Philippine Center of for Investigate Journalism. Last year, napili din po akong maging bahagi ng Exchange Program Activity sa Chiang Mai, Thailand, sponsored by NTFP Asia. Alamin natin na hindi madali magtaguyod ng isang samahan, lalo't higit ang katulad namin na walang regular na pundong nakukuha. Walang sweldo kundi binubuo ng volunteers. Narito ang ilang sa mga encounter kung suliranin bilang leader nung kami ay nagsimula hanggang sa kasalukoyan at mga naging solusyon. Una, maraming pag-aalilangan noon, lalo't higit sa lahat ay leader na babae. Gusto sana noon ay lalaki. Hindi kasi ako ang taong makarisma. Ako ang taong seryoso at istrikto. Subalit, nakita rin nila kalaunan ang pagiging istrikto at seryoso na leader ay napakahalaga sa tagumpay ng aming organisasyon. Pangalawa, pagkuha ng suporta sa komunidad ang nakara nakasanayan ng mga taong gawain katulad ng pag-uuling, pagpuputol ng kahoy, pag-i-encroach sa protected areas ay nasasagan, nasasagasaan namin layo na, lalo na sa pangangalaga at proteksyon ng kalikasan. Sa maliit na komunidad, Ilan lang ang makukuhang suporta dahil ang mga nabanggit na gawain ang pinagkukunan ng kabuhayan at halos naka, ng halos nakakarami. Marami ang nag-aalangan na makilahok. Maraming question kung bakit kung kami ay magtatagumpay. Sa aming walang sawang pakikipag-usap sa aming komunidad tungkol sa halaga ng kalikasan, gayon din ang pagbibigay ng alternatibong kabuhayan katulad ng pag-aalaga ng hayop, pagkuha ng aming mga serbisyo tuwing may mga proyekto kaming ginagawa katulad ng mga pagtanim sa gubat o construction ng aming water system. Ilan lamang ito ay mga, sa mga gawain ay naibahagi namin sa komunidad. Ang mga tao ay hindi gumagawa ng illegal dahil ito ay pinili nila subalit dahil sa, kapang, sa pangangailangan sa buhay at sa maliit na sityo gagaya namin, napakaliit ang oportunidad na ito. Kaya layunin namin na mas itaguyod pa ang proyekto naming ginawa upang hindi kailangan pang mapili ng tao ang bagay para kumita pero sirain ang kalikasan. Pangatlo, kakulangan sa kaalaman. Ito ang isa sa madalas na nagiging problema na nauobserbahan ko sa ating kababaihan o kahit sa kung anong gender man. Malaki ang kanilang pag-aalinlangan dahil wala o kulang sa kanilang kaalaman. Noong una, dahil bago pa lang ako leader, eh hindi ko, hindi ko ganun, ganun ka-aware sa environmental protection. Nahirapan akong intindihin ang mga ilang bagay, lalo ang mahalagang batas, karapatan at mahalagang impormasyon tungkol sa CBFM, nung simula pa lang ako. Subalit, natutunan ko ng mahalin, natutunan ko mahal natin ang ating ginagawa ay may paraan. Kaya nag-research ako, nag-develop ng kaalaman sa trainings, seminars at pakikipag-usap sa eksperto. Mas lalo akong namulat at yakapin ang buong pagmamahal ang aking ginawa para sa inang kalikasan. Lagi kong ipinaala na huwag gawing opsyon ang pagiging walang alam. Matutong mag-aral, manaliksik o magtanong. Huwag matakot kung hindi marunong mag-ingles. Huwag matakot sa mga salitang bago pa lang narinig o batas na hindi naiintindihan. Huwag matakot pag nag-i-English ang kausap, pag-aralan ng mga bagay na hindi alam. Sa edad kong ito, sa edad kong ito, hindi pa rin ako matapos sa pagsasaliksik ng mga bagay na pwede ko pang matutunan. Sabi nga, walang limit sa pag-aaral. 
Bilang leader na babae, napaka-natural ang pagiging matiisin. Kayang lampasan lahat na may taguyod lang ang anak, hindi ba? Ganon din ang nararamdaman ko para sa aming layunin para sa kalikasan. Kung hindi kami magsisimula, sino kaya? Kung susuko kami, sino ang lalaban sa kalikasan? Isang katangian na natural sa babae ang pagiging matiisin, matyaga. Yung walang humpay sa request, proposals, letters, follow up, mga tawag o text sa cellphone sa mga insyang taong pwedeng lapitan o kulitin. Salamat po kung isa man sa inyo ay nakakatanggap ng na, mga sa mga funding yung bang gagapang kasalupa para map, sa pangarap ng bituin na naghihintay ka bukas luluhod ang mga tala. Pasensya na po naalala ko lang ang mga pelikula noong panahon pa ng lola ko. <laughs> Ngayon, Pebrero, may mga nasimulan kaming i-organize na as associate members ng mga sumusunod na lugar sa iba't ibang functions o proyekto, pero isa lang ang layunin, Protection and Livelihood Program. Labing isang uh, POS organization katulad ng Salvation, Ratan Livelihood, Alimangwan, uh, Mangrove Area, Mangrove Crab Culture, Alimangwan Farming and Protection, Alimangwan, San Vicente, GMP, Dibatagbo, Women's Visible and Cassava Plantation, uh, Binga, Kapwas, Swine Production, Makatumbalin, Mango Gap Culture. Ayan po ay aming ipoprovide this year. Lahat ng mga proyekto mga nabanggit sa lugar ay for IEC approval. At gayon din ang project proposal na bawat, sa bawat area naming isasubmit sa NTFP Asia Pastorize Program. Lahat ng proyektong ito ay pinangunan ng mga kababaihan, pasintabi sa mga kalalagihan, hindi namin po kayo isinasantabi. Pero bakit nga ba kailangan naming palakasin ang grupo ng babae? Batay sa mga karanasan, narito ang ilan sa mga dahilan. Una, pagkaroon ng pagpapalaga sa sarili. Dahil habang binibigyan natin ng oportunidad, Bilang individual na i-develop ang kanilang kakayahan maliban sa paggawa ng gawaing bahay o pakikipagchismisan sa kapitbahay, nagkaroon ng mas madalim na pagtinginan ang mga kababaihan sa kanilang mga kakayanan. Minsan, kasi may mga talintong nakatago lang, sa, nakatago lang yung iba, magaling sa paghabi. Yung iba naman magaling sa pagpapalago ng halaman. Yung iba naman ay maganda ang kamay sa pag-aalaga ng mga hayop. Pangalawa, mas masayang ina, mas masayang tahanan. Marami ang nakakaranas na hindi mga mapagkasya ang budget para sa pagkain lamang. Di ba po? Hindi po, hindi pakasama ang ibang gastusin katulad ng pambayad sa ilaw, kuryente, paaralan. Talagang problema ni nanay, laging problema at malamang laging mainit ang ulo. Subalit ito ay hindi natin masisisi sa ating mga ina. Ang lahat dahil mentally affected ang mga kababayan sa araw-araw na pag-iisip ng budget na dahil sa hindi sapat. Subalit kapag ang babae ay nakaambag sa nang financial na gastusin sa bahay, mas magaan ang pinansyal na pamumuhay kaya sa mas less ang stress at mas napakalaki ng masaya at malusog na mga anak. Sabi nga ng 9 years old kong apo sa kanyang slogan sa paralan, a healthy community is a wealthy community. At ang, mga, at ang panghuli, pagtulong-tulong ang lahat ng babae o lalaki, bata man o matanda. Isang pamayanan ay mas magiging magaan ang pagkilos tungo sa tagumpay ng bawat proyekto. Sabi nga, kapag sama-sama, kayang-kaya. Hindi matatawaran ang napakahalagang bahagi ng aming samahan ang mga aktibo naming mga membro sa kalalakihan. Hindi rin namin magagawa ang lahat kung wala sila. Subalit hindi rin namin maistantabi ang mga impluensya ng kababaihan ay may pantay na lakas. Yung 
kung may makisuyo pero may tapang, kung may kinakailangan. Kaya magipag-usap na may pangang may pagpapakumbaba pero may matapang na prinsipyo at paninindigan. Kapag ang babae, ang mga siwa, pati ang asawa o anak, ay mabilis na makukumbinsi. May mga insidente kasi na kahit gustuhin man ng lalaki na makisali sa gawain, kapag ang babaeng asawa ay hindi sunang ayon, ang pinal na desisyon ay susundin ni lalaki. Ilan po ba ang ganoon dito sa ating pagtitipon laging sinusunod si Mrs.? Ang mga babae, magaling gumawa ng paraan at manguna lagi sa oras para sa mga gawain higit sa lahat aktibo. Sa probinsya kasi, kahit ang mga lalaki minsan may inuman pa bago magtrabaho. Alisin natin ang salitang lalaking kausap dahil kahit babae, maingay man ang bibig ay kayang manindigan sa mga sinasabi. Kung hindi sa sariwain muli ang mabibigat ang muli Mahigit dalawang dekada na mula nang kami ay magsimula, napakalayo na ang aming narating at da dami ang aming nagawa. Yung mga hindi naniniwala noon sa aming layunin at, at sa aking pagiging leader ay may mga pagbabago at pananaw nang nakita nila na maging produkto sa aming mga sakripisyo sa pagsisikap. Sa loob ng maraming taon, Natutunan kong maging leader na mapagpakumbaba ngunit dahil may tapang at paninindigan para igalang. Sa lupo ng kalalakihan, naipakita kong may pantay lang ang aming mga kakayahan. May matatag na prinsipyo na hindi kailanman kayang tapati ng pera. Ilang bisis na pong matangkang pagtangkang ilan kami ay pakansel. At subalit sa awan ng Diyos, Nandito pa rin ang kami. Nakuha naming manatili ang CBFM at lalong maraming kasama sa pa-expand ng adjacent areas bilang associate members at kabilang ang ating mga IPs at mga bagong grupo ng mga kabataan sa advokasya ng CBFM. Subalit sa pagiging mabuti o maprinsipyo, di sapat kung hindi sasabayan ng pag pagiging masipag at tapat sa trabaho kahit walang sweldo. May pagkukusa na kahit madalas ay gumagastos ng sariling pera para masimulan ang project sa komunidad. Yan po ang mga kababaihan ng mga picture namin. Last page. Madalas kahit hindi pa nagagrant ang aming fund, nagsisimula na kami sa katulad ng tree planting o kahit walang fund ay meron kaming nursery. Lagi kong pinapaalala na kung gusto ay may paraan. Gayun, ganun yata ang mga ina, kahit imposibleng budget ay mapapag, magagawa ng paraan. Mahigit dalawang pong taon na ang nakalipas, ako ay simpleng may bahay at ina ng aking mga anak. Subalit, nagbago ang lahat ng mas maging aware ako sa aking pwedeng maging role o tungkulin para sa ating pamayanan. Kaya, ko palang maging leader para sa kalikasan. Tumayo at lahat ng hamon na walang takot kahit minsan. Mga politiko at nasa pamahalaan ay nasa sagasaan ng aming mga layunin. Lahat ng, lahat ng ito ay hindi dahil sa matapang lang ang mga at maprinsipyo. Lahat ito ay dahil sa mga kaalaman at natutunan ko. Matapang ako dahil alam ko na ang katapatan, karapatan ko at ang aming samahan. Matapang ako dahil kahit hindi ko... Man alam ay isang bagay alam kong kaya ko itong matutunan. May tapang dahil may alam. Tungkol sa batas, tungkol sa karapatan, tungkol sa kalikasan. Sana dumating ang panahon na hindi marinig ang salitang naku ayaw kong makisali dyan dahil hindi ko, ka, hindi ko alam. Lalo na kung ang pinag-uusapan tungkol sa ating kalikasan. Isang napakalaging oportunidad sa akin at ang mga miyembro ng aming kababayan na magkaroon ng tapang o makilahok. Dahil ang inang kalikasan ay nangangailangan din ng aruga at pag-iingat gaya ng pag-aruga natin sa ating mga anak. Kailangan pa ang mas maraming kababayan na maging ina ng kalikasan. Manguna sa mga gawain na walang takot dahil sa 
mas equip na sila sa kaalaman. Sana mas marami pang kababaihan ang magkaroon ng opportunity katulad naming lumalahok sa training seminars at anumang gawain na mas may, mabibigay sa kanila ng, kum, ng kumpina, uh, kumpensasyon na maging aktibong bahagi ng pamayanan. Sa ating kababaihan, kasama ang ating mga natural na magagandang katangian bilang babae, gawain nating Empowered ang ating mga sarili sa pamagitan ng kaalaman. Walang imposible kahit mahirap man. Tandaan natin, wala sa edad kung ilan tayo pwedeng matuto basta gustuhin natin. Muli kong babalikan ang tanong na anong bahagi ang ak sa aking presentasyon. Ang pagiging moderno ng panahon, nagbabago na rin ba ngayon ang depinasyon o role ng kababayan sa komunidad? Para sa akin medyo challenging pero unti-unti ang unti-unting nahuhubog ang mahalagang bahagi ng ating mga kababaihan sa pangunguna na pangungunahan ng laban para sa kalikasan. Ito ay base sa aming experience sa Palawan. Sana lang mas maramdaman pa ng suportahan mula sa lokal na pamahalaan maging nasyonal na ang layuning pangangalaga sa ating kalikasan ay hindi babangga sa sariling interes os ng mga nasa kap nasa kapangyarihan upang sa ganun ay mas marami ang makilahok na walang takot hindi puno ng positibong pag-asa na ang kanilang buhay ay aangat kasabay na ang pag-iingat ng mga natural resources mula sa kabundugan hanggang sa karagatan sa huli nagpapasalamat po ako sa oportunidad na ibinigay niyo sa akin sa araw na ito Muli, makakalikas ang araw po. Mara, matamang salamat. Ang matamang salamat. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much po, Ms. Nida Colliado, for that very empowering and inspiring talk. So now we are opening the floor for your questions. Forrester Villegas and Ms. Glinoga, may I invite you to take your seats here in front? And Ms. Colliado, may I request you to open your camera. For our online viewers, you may send your questions in the comment section. And for our audience here on site, please approach the microphone, introduce yourself, and address your question to our speakers. Do you have any questions here from our audience on site? We can first start here and then to be followed by our audience online. Anyone from our audience, our students? Ah, uh, yes? Um. Hindi po to para sa isa lang pong speaker, para po dun sa, tat sa tatlo po na bilang isang kabataan po ba or may, bilang isang member po ng agriculture, agriculture land or bilang nag-aaral naman po kami ng agriculture, um, para ano po yung best na maipapayay nyo sa amin para mas mapuunlad pa po yung talent namin, hindi lang po sa pagtatanim kundi po sa pagpapataba po ng lupa. Ah, salamat salamat sa iyong katanungan. Oo, oh, maganda maganda iyong ano na na raise na tanong. No? Ang may papayo ko po sa inyo, ang Pilipinas po ay isang agrikultural na bansa, no? Isang archipelago, mayaman sa isda. Mayaman sa mga mga yamang lupa, no? Sa kagubatan, mayaman sa mineral, no? Ang may papayo ko ay pagyamanin natin ang ating agrikultura no para ating hindi lang makatulong sa ating pamilya sa ating sariling pamumuhay pati na rin sa ikaulad ng ating ekonomiya so kung <coughs> ikaw ay pipili ng iyong magiging karera kayang pagyamanin ang agrikultura sa tamang pamamaraan yun lang po ang aking thank you sir Villegas do you have any questions? 
Ay, okay. Yes, Miss Binaga. Um, ako, very happy if you are all here because you are studying agriculture. I am very happy kasi may papalit na sa amin. To answer your question, sir, ito lang po. Do what your heart desires. Huwag mong isipin ang sasabihin ni kahit sino sa iyo. Do what your heart desires. If you are into vegetable, go vegetable. If you are into trees, go trees. If you are into animals, go animals. Thank you. Thank you po, Ms. Binoga. Ms. Nida? Sa akin po, ang advice ko lang sa mga, sa question niya kanina, kung tungkol sa sa healthy, healthy na lupa sa ating farm, lalo na sa kagubatan, uh, sundin natin ang tamang pagprotekta sa ating kalikasan kasi pag mag-aabuso tayo, pag hindi natin proteksyonan na ang ating kalikasan, sunog, cutting, mawawala rin ang taba ng ating topsoil. So dapat maging concern sila sa, sa pagkonserba ng ating ingatya, ating likas naman. Okay, thank you po, Ms. Nida. Do you have any more questions here on site? Okay, so we have a question online. Let me read it. In your opinion, how can the private sector help empower women farmers? Ms. Binaga or Sir Carl or Ms. Nida can answer it. Empowering women. Although hindi naman natin pwede siguro sabihin, or let me rephrase. Pwede nating sabihin, we have been empowered. Uh, women are already empowered nowadays. So, kailangan lang siguro more support pa. Kasi, um, like, if there are programs, uh, be there. Kasi, hindi naman sinasabing hinahadlangan ang mga babae na sa ngayong panahong ito. Uh, we are now empowered. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Wang. Ms. Nida, do you have anything to add? Uh, uh, karagdagan ko lang. Uh, though empowered tayo kasi sa karami, marami, pa rin, uh, marami pa rin kababaihan na dapat tuloy-tuloy ang ating pag-develop ay easy sa kanilang kakayahan para maabot nila ang tugatog ng tagumpay. Kasi uh, hindi natin pwedeng si, ganun na lang. Dapat i, ano natin talaga siya, supo, ano, alalayan talaga sila para maging uh, protect, uh, magiging ano maabot nila ang kanilang ang wish natin na para maging empowered sila kasi marami pa ang mahina ang kakayanan lalo na sa kabundukan yes mama agree po thank you po okay so we have another question online ay sir okay sir sa larangan ng pribadong sektor no ang isa sa pangunahing pangangailangan ng ating mga women farmers, lalo na yung mga nasa kabundugan, nasa laylayan, yung access nila sa resources. Kadalasan kasi wala silang access sa resources. Alam po ni Ma'am Nida yan. Hindi po nila maabot. Minsan, ang giya ay nanggagaling sa pamahalaan. Hindi sila minsan natutulungan. Minsan may tulong. Bakit hindi natin tingnan ang ibang sangay ng lipunan, hindi lang ang pamalaan, pati ang private sector, pati na rin ang civil society, NGO. So, yun ang isa. Karaniwan kasi, depende sa private sector, meron tayong tinatawag na small, medium, enterprise, corporation. No? Kung ikaw ay isang private sector, maaring ikaw ay may financial resources na maaari mong ibahagi itulong doon sa mga nasa laylay ng lipunan na mahirap magkaroon ng pang-araw-araw na pangangailangan dahil sa kakulangan ng pera o ng suporta. No? So, yun ang minsan tinatawag natin ng public-private community partnership. Hindi lang sa larangan ng resources, pati na rin sa teknolohiya. Si Ma'am Linoga, meron siya mga teknolohiyang na 
develop dun sa kanilang permakultura. At kung ito ay ibahagi natin na nandun sa kabundukan, nandun sa laylayan, nandun sa ikabilang ilog, ikatlong ilog, na maaari makatulong sa kanyang pamumuhay, may unlad sa kanyang pang-araw-araw, pangangailangan, at hindi lang ganun, madagdagan ng income para maipadala ang kanilang anak sa mga gandang, magkaroon ng magandang edukasyon. So sa tingin ko, yun ang isang bagay na maaaring ibahagi ng ating private sector kasi sila karaniwan ay may financial resources or yung technology na available. Yun lang po. Thank you, Sir Carl. So we have another question po online. How can we engage both young women and men in agricultural activities? Anyone can answer po? In our case, in the farm or in gift, um, we encourage minors, um, out of school youth to go, um, um, how do you call this? Uh, junior junior farm hands, basta hindi lang apektado yung pag-aaral. Pag nakikita namin medyo apektado na, we, we would advise the children to stop. So we have um, uh, junior farm hands in the farm. We even had one na nag-apply sa amin ng trabaho kasi daw pala tumigil na siya sa pag-aaral dahil hindi daw siya nabibigyan ng tama niyang pangangailangan. So ang ginawa ko, kinausap, nag-drop na siya, as in officially dropped from school. So ang ginawa ko, kinausap ko yung school, pakitanggap po ninyo ulit ang bata. Ako na po ang bahala. So he's back in school right now. Yun po. Kasi ang priority po para sa akin is, edukasyon pa rin. Wala kahit ano, kahit magsasaka, kailangan mo pa rin ng edukasyon. So, kailangan pa rin mag-aral. Yun po. Yes, so, Thank you po, Sir, Sir Carl. Isa sa paraan na para ma-engage ang mga kabataan ay yung tinatawag namin sa forestry na learning by experience. no? Yung Pagtuturo mo ng kahalaga ng kalikasan, minsan ay hindi mo makikita sa aklat, pero kapag pumunta kayo sa kagubatan at naipaliwanag na ito ang yung kaninang na-mention ko, yung ecosystem services o yung mga uh, kapanibangan, yung napapakinabang natin mula sa kalikasan. So, yun ang isang paraan habang bata pa pag Naturuan mo, na-expose mo, na-appreciate ng mga kabataan yung kahalagahan ng kagubatan na hindi lang putol, walang haba sa pagpuputol, pero pangangasiwaan mo siya ng maayos. At ito ay hindi lang sa aklat, ganun din sa experiential learning or yung actual na pangyayari. Thank you po sir. Ms. Nida? Uh, sa amin din po, sa amin sa community-based forest management, uh, lalo na sa mga membro namin, may mga edad na lahat ng anak namin, uh, pinipilit namin maging kasapi ng aming samahan at talagang dinadala namin sila aktual sa planting, activity namin sa nursery at saka sa paglilinis sa aming uh, beaches sa harap ng aming eco ecotourism. Kasi uh, dapat talaga sumama sila. Kasi sila na mga second liners, matrain na sila para mahalin ang aming na ang aming ginawang pagmahal sa kalikasan. Thank you po, Ms. Nida. So we have another question. What major challenge have you encountered in farming and how did you overcome it? Other speakers can answer po. Um, in our case, kasi hindi kami accessible by transport, logistics talaga ang major, 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 major naming problema. Sana may makarinig dyan, no? farm to market road naman, no? utang na loob, parang ganun. <laughs> Pero I'm not complaining because umaabot sa point na para bang we are unique. Challenge siya. Pero pag iniisip mo pala, there is 
pristine in it kasi hindi ako napopollute ng sasakyan. Hindi ako napopollute ng noise. Hindi ako napopollute ng population. Challenge siya. So ang ginawa namin to to paano ba? To to, to counter this is binaliktad namin instead of bringing our products out of the farm, we invite guests to come to the farm, devour the food, the, the harvest that we have. So sila na ang kakain, hindi na kami ang magbibitbit. That's why we are also into farm tourism. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you po, ma'am. Sir Carl. Sa, sa larangan naman ng ano, kagubatan, no? meron tayong may tinatawag na forest farming, tree farming, o agroforestry farming, no? Sa ngayon kasi, uh, hindi pa natin na may mainstream masyado, no? Unlike, no? Unlike yung mga kapitbahay natin, mga bansa sa Asia, no? Sa Indonesia, sa Thailand, sa Vietnam, nagti-tree farming na sila. In fact, nag export na sila ng kahoy, no? Sa atin, ang isang hamon natin dito ay ang ating mga polisiya. No? Kailangan ang polisiya natin sa larangan ng kagubatan ay maging friendly, lalo na sa mga private sector, sa mga practitioners tulad ni ma'am. Kasi sa forestry, kapag nagtanim ka sa sarili mong lupa, private land, tanim ka ng isang puno, ikaw nagtanim, pahirapan pa ang pag-harvest. Aabutin ng anim na buwan, minsan umaabot pa ng matagalan, no? Paano ka mag-encourage no, magtanim? So, ating reviewin sana yung polisiya at gawin naman sana na mas friendly po, no? Opo, op, dun po sa mahili magtanim kasi meron tayong tinatawag na sustainable management, no? Nagtanim ka para pakinabangan mo. So, yun po yung isang hamon. Nakalimutan ko yung isa, mamaya na lang. Thank you po, Sir Carl. Miss Nida? Uh, isa pong... Uh, ano sa amin isang challenge na hin ano ko kasi yung sa ang ngayon nangunguna ang palawan pag issue ng resolution para sa maging bill masuporta ng bill ang aming CBFM para mayroong matatag na batas ang CBFM may direksyon at katulad lang ng aming CRMF na hanggang ngayon we cannot move because our not our non timber forest product depends on the CRMF. So, ko siguro mas maganda kung ang aming CBFM na hiniling ngayon na nagpapatulong din po kami sa pag-aaral ng pananaliksik ng UPLB, nag-request na kami for this bill. At may ginagapang din namin ng mga congressman sa pangunguna rin ng ating kami sa Palawan ang nanguna ng resolusyon na ito at kung at isa pa po yung challenge na nabanggit, isa pang babanggitin ko yung road kasi Uh, kailangan namin din ng magkaroon ng road na kahit huwag na yung road na daanan ng sasakyan yung one meter lang na makadaan ang motorsiklo dahil mayroon kaming tatlong uh, waterfall sa loob ng CBFM na pwedeng maging income ng aming mga ng samahan para kumita para marating ng mga turista kasi napakalayo we have six hours back and forth from the ano loading point kaya kailangan namin ng half meter na concrete road kasi pinatabasan lang namin na maintain para marating dahil sayang ang tanawin na napakaganda sa aming sa aming CBFM. Thank you po Miss Nida. Uh, yes sir Carl. Yeah, naalala ko na no, yung isang hamon no. Paano mo ba maiko-connecta ilik yung people to market no bibigyan ko kayo ng kwento noon ako ay nasa kabundukan diyan sa Cagayan nakita ko yung mga mango nila naglalaglagan lang nabubulok doon nasa ang ang upland siguro mga one and a half hours magmo-motor ka pataas doon sa upland no tingin ko sa upland ang daming mangga nahuhulog nabubulok so Bakit hindi nila maiproduce yung mangga doon? Ang sabi sa akin ng kaibigan ko, eh sir, 
Ako tinamang ka, bibilin sa baba, dalawang piso. Eh, yung pamasahe, 80 pesos sa jeep. So, lugi na. So, yun. Linking the products to the market. No. Ang isa pang nakikita kong hamon dyan ay mas maganda ang consolidated. No? Kung marami kayo nagpaproduce ng isang produkto, mas maganda may cooperative kayo. Sila yung kumukuha ng produkto, regulated ang price, at nagbababa dun sa market. No? Kasi kadalasan may disconnect ang market, hindi namimit yung commodity dun sa taas. Iba yung naproproduce. No? Ganyan din ang nangyari noon sa Jatrofa. Sabi nila, ang lakas ng kita ng Jatrofa, fuel oil. Meron pang pondo ang ating mga national government at ibang mga entities. No? Lahat nagtaniman ng Jatrofa. Maski yung cash, high value crops, tinaniman ng Jatrofa. Lumaki ang Jatrofa, nagmature, walang bumili. So hindi ngayon maling sa market, eh paano ba naman bibili? Eh wala namang processing facility dun sa area. O oh, nasayang si Jatropa ngayon. So you link the product to the market and the people. Yun ang sa tingin ko isang napakahalagang hamon ng mga farmers. Thank you very much po Sir Carl. So do we have any other questions from our audience here on site? None? So if there are no more questions, that ends our open forum. Once again, let's all give a warm round of applause to all our three speakers. Forrester Carl Abelard Villegas, Ms. Nieva Wenglinaga, and Ms. Nida Colliado. So at this point, may we call on Dr. Joan Serrano, Dean of FMDS, and Dr. Fina Flor Tailan, Director of the Office of Gender Concerns, to award the certificates to our speakers. Please allow me to read the citation. University of the Philippines Open University, Faculty of Management and Development Studies, in partnership with the Office of Gender Concerns, presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Forrester Carl Abelard Villegas, Ms. Nanyeva Wenglinaga, and Ms. Nida Colliado for serving as a, as a presenter during the Advancing Gender Equality Sustainability and Inclusive Society, Role of Permaculture, Community Forest Development, and Native Trees as Sustainable-Based Livelihoods in the Philippines. Held on 21 March 2023 at the UPOU CCDL Auditorium. Given this 21st day of March 2023 at the UP Open University, Signed, Dr. Joan V. Serrano, FMDS Dean, and Dr. Fina Flor F. Thailand, OGC Director. Thank you very much, Dr. Serrano, Dr. Thailand, and to all our three speakers. As Ms. Nida, we will deliver your certificates and tokens. To formally close the program, may we again invite the Director of the Office of the Gender Concerns, Dr. Fina Flor F. Thailand. Yan, salamat, Jelaine. Yan, maliban sa International Day of Forest ngayon, syempre, uh, bibit-bitin ko rin ang isa ko pang profession na mahal na mahal ko rin at magkakasalubong tayo ngayon. Ano. Ngayon din kasi ay World Social Work Day sa buong mundo, no, March 21. So binabati ko ang lahat ng mga social workers all over the world. Yan. At syempre, ang ating... Ginagawang programa ngayon ay in line with our National Women's Month as per our uh, law here in the Philippines sa uh, Marso. Kaya masayang-masaya ko narinig niyo yung ating mga discussion, yung intersection ng iba't ibang mga discussions. Ano, ayan, may tumataw mamaya. <laughs> kaya masaya tayo na narinig natin yung CB, uh, RM, CBFM, isa yan sa mga pinag-aaralan namin sa kursa namin. Kasi yung uh, People's Organization, pag organisa yung partisipasyon ng mga tao ay kailangan-kailangan. At syempre yung sustainable development. So sa hapon pong ito, no, masaya ako na natalakay at mas naging malinaw sa akin. At I hope ganun din sa inyo, lalo na sa ating mga kabataan. Ito mga ganitong bagay nito. Uh, respeto sa kalikasan, respeto sa kababaihan at sa kanilang kakayahan at kontribusyon no, sa iba't ibang mga aspeto. Pati na rin ang mga kalalakihan 
at kahit anumang gender identity. Kasi lahat tayo, kahit anong kasarian, ay may kakayahan. Lagi kong binabanggit sa mga gender sensitivity training natin, kahit sa mga paaralan, yung, la akong, yung aking pa-hashtag, no? Hashtag wala sa kasarian ang kakayahan. Paki-hashtag yun na lang maya-maya. Kasama ng iba pang hashtag natin. <laughs> Tapos syempre, respeto sa karapatan ng tao at sa kapwa kung ano ang nais niyang gawin. Kasama dito kung uh, gusto nating maging uh, para sa agrikultura, sa forestry, sa uh, iba pang mga larangan. Pero kailangan nito ng suporta. No? Hindi lang siya basta gusto ko to i-push mo yan. Pero kailangan-kailangan natin, pag pinag-uusapan natin ng karapatang pantao, ay ang suporta mula sa ating mga duty bearers at ito ay ang ating pamahalaan at ito ay mga uh, na-discuss din natin kanina na talakay. Uh, Pinag-usama rin natin yung focus sa gutom o pagkain, kalusugan, kabuhayan o livelihood, at syempre yung pangkabuang buhay. No? At ito nga, gaya na nabanggit ko, na pag usapan din natin, yung tungkulin ng pamahalaan ng ating mga opisyal at leader, kaya napaka-importante sa mga kabataan at sa mga hindi masyadong kabataan katulad ko. <laughs> at sa mga medyo mas tumatanda pang iba, yung kahalagahan ng matalino at responsabling pagboto at citizenship. No? Kasi magkakaugnay lahat ng ito, hindi natatapos sa election. Biglang magiging election forum to, no? pero hindi. Kasi araw-araw nating mararanasan kasi yung epekto ng nangyayari sa pag-election. At syempre yung mataas na level ng partisipasyon ng pamayanan ng bawat isa sa atin, ng iba't ibang sektor, katulad nga ninyo, kabataan. Sino nga ka mga kabataan dito? Kabataan! Kabataan! <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Matanda, lalaki, babae, indigenous peoples, o mga nasa kadnayunan, o kahit sino pa, kahit yung mga nasa syudad. At ang lahat ng ito, lahat na nabanggit natin, ay magkakaugnay, magkakadigkit, at magkakadugtong. Kaya naman bawat isa sa atin ay may magagawa, at ang hamot ko sa lahat, pati sa aking sarili, simulan na natin ngayon, no? simulan na natin sa ating mga sarili, sa pagbabago ng kaisipan, no? sa pagbabago sa ating mga gawi at ginagawa araw-araw, sa ating tahanan, sa ating paaralan, at syempre sa ating pamayanan. So tara na, ngayon na. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much for Dr. Taylan. So with that, we conclude our program. Once again, I am Jeline Bagos. This has been Advancing Gender Equality, Sustainability, an inclusive society, role of gender, of permaculture, community forest development, and native trees as sustainable based livelihoods in the Philippines. So if the evaluation link is currently flashed on screen, please accomplish the evaluation form until tomorrow. So this will be the basis for the issuance of your e-certificates. Once again, thank you very much and have a great day.